Hello and welcome back at my channel. Today we will continue with number system. For those who are new at this channel, please do not forget to subscribe and see my videos and my newest one that will come. Did you know that the IPv4 is 32 bits long and can be shown in binary system for the computers for the network and the decimal system for the people? And also the IPv6 is 128 bits long and also can be shown in binary system for the network and computers and hexadecimal system for the people. And as a network administrator, you must know how to convert the binary address into dotted decimal and vice versa, and also how to convert the dotted decimal into hexadecimal system and vice versa. So the objective of this lesson today is to calculate numbers between decimal and binary system and also to calculate numbers between decimal and hexadecimal system. So let's go. And as we mentioned, the topics for today will be the binary and decimal number system and the hexadecimal number system. IPv4 addresses begin as binary of series of 1 and zeros, and these are difficult to manage, so the network administrator must convert them to the decimal, and we will show some ways how to do that. But before we go, we have to know that the binary is a numbering system that consists of digits 0 and 1s called bits. And in contrast, the decimal numbering system consists of 10 digits from digit 0 to 9. The binary system is important for us to understand because whole servers and network devices use the binary addressing. Especially, they use binary IPv4 addresses as it is shown in the this figure. And in this figure, you can see that each address consists of a string of 32 bits divided into four sections called octets. And each octet contains 8 bits separated with a dot, as you can see here. So if we get the PC1, we will see that the IPv4 assigned to this number is 1, 1, and all zeros at the first one. And then you will see the other octets. See? It's default gateway address would be that of this one and as you can see this is the IPv4 in bits and binary works well with host and network devices however it's very challenging for humans to work with this so for easy understanding and use by people IPv4 addresses are expressed in dotted decimal notation. So if we go to the other figure, we will see that the PC1 had the IP address that was shown in binary system. It is shown in this way as a decimal number. And the gateway of the router 1 for the network here at the interface G000 it is from this number to the binary system at this number at the decimal. For a solid understanding of network addressing, it is necessary to know the binary addressing and gain practical skills how to convert the between binary and dotted decimal IPv4 addresses. And this will be shown in the next slides. Learning to convert binary to decimal requires an understanding of positional notation. Positional notation means that the digits represent different values depending on the position the digit occupies in the sequence of numbers. We know the most common number system, the decimal notation system. If we will focus on this table, we will uh, describe each row of the table. The first row gives us the radix of the number base. The decimal notation is based on 10, so the radix for this one is 10. 
the row 2 will give us the position in number considering the position of the decimal number starting with from right to left for 0 for the first position, 1 for the second position, 2 for the third, and so on. And these numbers also represent the exponential value used to calculate the positional value in the fourth row. The row 3 calculates the positional value by taking the radix and raising it by the exponential value of its position in row 2. And the row 4 will give us the positional value represent units of 1000, 100, 10, and 1. So, based on that logic, we will have this result for the decimal number 1, 2, 3, 4. And in contrast, for the binary position notation, it will operate as it is described in the table. At the first row, we have the radix of the number base. Num binary notation is based on 2. Therefore, the radix for this one is 2. And the second row, we have the position in number considering by the position of the binary number systems starting with from right to left, 0 at the first position, 1 at the second, 2 at the third position, and ending with the 7 at the eighth position. These numbers also represent the exponential value used to calculate the positional value in the fourth row. At the row 3, we will calculate the positional value by taking the radius and raising it by the exponential value of its position in row 2. And the row 4 will give us the position value represented units of 1, 2, 4, 8, etc., etc. And based on this logic, if we have the binary number system with the 2 ones and 6 zeros, and if we calculate that by the position of each uh, number, and we will have the result as 192. To convert the binary IPv4 addresses to its daughter decimal equivalent, divide the IPv4 addresses into four 8 bits octet. Next, apply the binary positional value to the first octet binary number and calculate accordingly. So, if we have this example of IPv4 at the binary system and we need to convert that to the decimal, we will start with the first octet with those first 8 bits and we will enter those 8 bits under the positional value of the row 1 and we will calculate them and we will have the result. We will next convert the second octet so we will do the same we will add the binary system binary number under the first row at the position of value, we will calculate them and we will have the result. And we will continue the same with the third octet and with the fourth octet. By doing so, we found for each octet the decimal number of, of the octet. And if we want to show the complete IP address to be understandable by the other users at the network, we will have this IPv4 in decimal. It is necessary and very useful to understand how to convert a dotted decimal IPv4 to the binary system. And to do so, we will base on the algorithm that it will be shown. And we will start with the first octet width of the IPv4. And at that octet, if we see that the decimal number of the octet is equal or greater to the most significant bit, and which in this case is the 128 because that is the most significant bit. And we will see if the number is less than 128, we will add a zero in the 128 position value. If not, we will add a one and we will subtract the number with 128. And then we will go to the next position, which is 64. 
and we will see if the number now is equal or greater to, to the next significant bit, which is 64, as I said. If no, we will enter a zero there. If yes, we will add one, and then we will describe the value that we have with 64. And we will continue the same at the next position value, which is 32. We will see if it's more or less and we, if we need to add 1 or 0. And we will do the same until we will reach the 8th bit. So if, if you see here, there are 8 bits of one octet and we started to check with the most significant bit which was 128 and we will continue so doing this algorithm until we will reach the last most significant bit which is one. So let's give us an example how to convert from decimal to binary. And we will have the example of IPv4192.168.11.10. And we will start with the first octet that is 192. And based on the algorithm that we explained before, we will get the value of the octet, which is 192, and we will compare that with the most significant value at the left, which is 128. By comparing that, we see that 192 is higher than 128, so we will add the number 1 here, the bit 1, and we will subtract 192 with 128, and we will have the number 64. And by finishing with this bit, we will go to the other significant position value and then we will check if the 64 is more or less or equal to 64 the value position value of this bit at the octet and we will see that 64 is equal to 64 so what we will do we will add one and then we will subtract 64 with 64 and we will have zero so as long that we have zero now we will no need to compare the value with the other position value at the octet. So by that, we will add zero at the rest of the bits at the first octet. And then this is the IPv4 address for the first octet at the binary system. After we are done with the first octet 192, let's continue with the second octet 168. And if we go th through the same process based on the algorithm, we will do comparing of 168, the value of the octet, with the most significant bit word. And we will see that 168 is more than 128, and we'll, we'll add an on 1, and then we will do subtraction of 1. 68 with 128 and we will have the value of 40 and then we will go to the next significant number posi position value with 64 and we will compare that and we will see that the 40 is less than 64 so we will we'll add a zero and we will go to the next position value and we will see that 40 is more than 32 so we will add one here and then we will subtract 42 with 32 sorry 40 with 32 and we will have the number 8 and then we will go to the next position value which is 16 we will compare them we see that 8 is less so we add on 0 and we will go to the next position value which is 8 and then we will see that 8 is equal to 8. We add 1 here and with that we see that if we do the subtraction, we will have 0. So we will not need to compare with those position values there. So 
After we are done here, we will just add zero to the rest of the bits. And this is the IPv4 second octet at the binary system. And if we go with the last two octets, we will go with the third octet. And if we go through the algorithm, by doing so, we will have zero the fourth one and uh, one at the position value eight because 10 is more than eight. The difference between 10 and uh, eight is two, so it will be less than four, so it will be zero here. Equal, so it will be one, and no need to go further because the difference then will be zero, so we will just add a zero at the, at the end. And this will be the bits for the third octet. And at the fourth octet, it is 11, so same as with the 10. We will go through the same process until we will be here. It will be 1 because 11 is more than 8, 0 because the difference between them will be 3 and it's less. 1 because the difference will, it, the 3 is more than 2 and then we will do the difference we will be 1 and then we will add a 1 at the end because 1 is equal to 1 so we are done and if, after doing that we convert the decimal to the binary system and all the IP address of 192.168.10.11 will be this one in the binary system by converting binary system to decimal or decimal to the binary, we will understand the IPv4 addressing in the network. But if we want to understand even the IPv6, we need to convert hexadecimal to decimal and vice versa. Just as decimal is a base 10 number system and binary is a base of two number system, the hexadecimal is a base 16 system. The base 16 number system uses the digits 0 to 9 and the letters A to F. And as it is shown in the figure where the first one is a decimal format, the second one binary system format and the hexadecimal at the third one. Binary and hexadecimal work together very well because it is easier to express a value as a single hexadecimal digit than as a four binary base. The hexadecimal number system is used in networking to represent IPv6 addresses and Ethernet MAC addresses. IPv6 addresses are 128 bits in length comparing with the IPv4 which was 32 bits. And every 4 bits in the IPv6 is represented by a single hexadecimal of digit. Of a, for a total of 32 hexadecimal values. IPv6 addresses are not case sensitive and can be written either in lower case or upper case. And as it is shown in the figure, we prefer this format for writing the IPv6, where each X consists of four hexadecimal values. When referring to eight bits of uh, an IPv4 address, we use the term octets. But in the IPv6, we will use the term hextet, which is an, an official term to refer as a segment of 16 bits of four hexadecimal values. Each X is a single hextet with 16 bits of four hexadecimal digits. In, if we want to convert decimal number to hexadecimal number, we will go through three steps. We will convert the decimal number first to the 8 binary string at the octet. We will divide the binary string in groups of 4 starting from the rightmost position and we will convert each 4 binary number into their equivalent hexadecimal digit. So, for example, if we will have 168 and we will try to convert it in hexadecimal, we will go through the the steps first let's convert it in the binary system so we will have this one and then we will try to divide it into groups of four binary digits we will start from here and we will go 
we will count four and then we will divide them. So it will be we will have one zero one zero and one and three zero. And then we will find the hex that for each of those. So for the first one the hex will be A and for this one the hex will be A. And the answer for the 168 is A8 in hexadecimal. And if we want to do the opposite, if we want to convert hexadecimal number to decimal number, we will do the convert of the hexadecimal number to 4 bit binary string. We will create the 8 binary grouping starting from the rightmost position, and then we will convert that in the equivalent decimal digit. So we will want to convert D2 to the decimal, we will have in a binary string, D will be like this, 2 will be like this, and uh, after we will have that, we will regroup them in an 8-bit as the octet, and then we will have this string of bits. And if we want to this string of bits to convert that in a decimal format, it is equivalent to 210 in decimal. So the answer for converting the hexadecimal number D2 is this one. So it's, as you can see, if you want to convert a decimal number to the hexadecimal number, First, you need to convert it in a binary system and then add the hexadecimal number. And the same, if you want to convert the hexadecimal number to the decimal number, you first you have to go to the binary system and then convert in the, in the decimal format. That was all about number system when we saw the binary number system decimal number system and hexadecimal number system and how to convert from one system to the other and thank you for being with me to the, this session hopefully we will see together to the others and please do not forget to subscribe at AAAA networking and see you soon